In this video, we go into further detail in the options menu of the Carrot CMX management software. Hello, my name is Dirk from Carrot Powertrain Solutions. Thank you for watching episode 2 of the tutorial series for the Carrot CMX management software. In this video, we are going to discuss the first options in the settings menu, which are the RPM pickup, the sensor calibration, the injection settings, the startup and the lambda control. In this video, I go in detail into the settings menu in the Carrot CMX management software. Most of these functions of the Carrot CMX CCU can be found in this menu. I will explain these functions step by step. If you are not yet familiar with the software, I recommend that you first watch episode 1 of our tutorial series. Click on the link that appears below to go to this video. The settings menu can be reached from the main screen of the software. You will see the button on the right or you can open this menu by pressing F4. This is the settings menu with a wide range of options. I will discuss these options one by one. Good to know. In this menu you can also see the firmware version and the serial number of the ECU. We start here at the top left with RPM pickup. In the RPM pickup menu, you can make the settings that are related to the RPM sensor setup of the engine. With the RPM range button, you can set the distribution of the RPM rows in the injection and ignition maps. If you click on RPM, you can also display the table in 2D view so that you can adjust these values with the keys, as earlier explained in previous video. If you go back to the previous window, we can choose the type of crankshaft pattern here. At the moment, these are the supported patterns, but they will be further expanded for other models in the upcoming period. With the crank type, there is also a related reference point in the grease before top dead sender. If you select the crank type, it will change to the correct reference point. If this set reference point doesn't match your situation, you can always adjust it with the help of a flashlight. Below you can choose a CDI ignition or ignition with ignition coil. Most engines and motocross use a CDI ignition. This coil selection is optional. This isn't supported at the moment, but it is already prepared for future models. Finally, you can indicate below what the ref limiter should be when the engine is in neutral. And here the heart limiter for when the engine is in gear. This is the general RPM limiter. There is also a ref limiter when the launch control is active, but we will get to that in another video. During the heart limiter, the ignition is completely interrupted, preventing the engine speed from exceeding this limit. With this check mark here, you can indicate whether a fuel cut should occur when the limiter is active. In addition to interrupting the ignition, you can also interrupt the injection with this. This is generally not used in motocross. These are the functions of the RPM pickup menu. Let's go back to the settings menu. We continue with the sensor calibration menu. In this menu, you can calibrate the connected sensors of the motorcycle. We start above with the gearbox position. In these boxes, you can choose the gear. It is important that you start with the gear with the lowest voltage on the sensor. In other words, in the sequence of the gearbox. The box next to it is the gear with the voltage where it is increasing and the closest to the previous gear. In this case, and as most commonly, gear 1 is the most left box, followed by the neutral. Then second gear and so on. By means of the automatic calibration, the software ensures that the voltage are stored at the correct gears. You can see the current voltage of the sensor here. If we click on the automatic calibration, the following window appears where the software asks to put the motorcycle in first gear. When you have this done, click OK and the software will proceed to the next gear. This way you go through all the gears and the software will store the corresponding voltages. Here you can set the throttle sensor. It is very important for the software to properly calibrate the sensor as it performs injection calculations. First you can choose a response type how the software should deal with the sensor value. You have the option of linear, 
logarithmic, and e-log. For this application, we recommend to use the e-log type. This means that in the lower load area of the motor, the signal from the sensor is distributed over a large number of steps, compared to the higher load area, which is distributed over a small number of steps. Because these engines at the lower engine load area are more sensitive to throttle changes, and thus having better resolution in this area gives a better response. In this box, fully closed TPS, is indicated what the value of the sensor is when the throttle valve is fully closed. This means with the idle screw turned completely away, and then this value must match the engine load TPS value in the live view. In addition, you can set the range of the throttle position during idle, and the throttle position during full throttle here. And with this button, you can calibrate these values automatically. The software will ask to put the throttle valve in idle position, and after clicking OK, the software will ask to put the throttle valve in full throttle position. OK again, and then the software adopts these values in the settings. In this box, you can enter the map sensor characteristic. A map sensor sends out a voltage at a certain measure of pressure. This line is always linear, so it must be indicated what the offset of this line is. Or in other words, what is the pressure at zero volt? The gain is what the rise of this line is, or how much pressure rise per one volt. The measured pressure from the map sensor must correspond to the barometric pressure measured in the ECU when the engine is not running. In addition, you can also indicate here what the trigger voltage should be during starting. The map sensor determines when the ECU should spark when starting. The map sensor must drop below this voltage when starting. If this value is set to a low, the motor will not start. If this value is set to high, the ECU may initiate the ignition at the wrong time. The advice is to use the setting from the example mappings for the correct model. Finally, you can enable the rollover sensor here and the time that must elapse between when the sensor becomes active and the ECU switches off the engine. With this, we have discussed this fill menu and therefore we return to the main menu. Then we move on to the injection settings option. Here you can make the settings related to the injector control. With the overrun fuel cut, you can indicate under which conditions the injection should stop. With the RPM higher than this setting, plus the throttle position lower than this setting. This function can be used during engine braking, but is generally not used for motocross. Below you can activate the second injector output for engines equipped with a double injector arrangement. When this output is activated, you can indicate here what the enrichment should be when this injector is switched on, and here, how long this enrichment should last in crankshaft rotations. This is done because some of the first injected fuel does not end up in the combustion chamber but sticks to the wall of the intake. We go back to the main menu and proceed with the startup settings. These are the injection settings that are used when starting the engine, mainly during the cold start. When the engine is started, additional fuel is required for the engine to start properly. This extra fuel also depends on the temperature of the engine. This pulse is given once, as soon as the ECU detects an engine speed. This temperature here is corresponding with the last temperature column of the table here. In the table you can indicate, using four conditions, what the start injection must be for this condition. In this line, you can therefore set the condition up to which temperature this column is valid for. So in this case you have up to 10 degrees here, this column is valid from 10 degrees to 25 degrees, and so on. The line below is the injection pulse that must take place once, if a RPM signal is detected and the engine is in this temperature range. After this first pulse, this table below can be used to indicate what the injection should do in the phase after the first pulse and the engine starting. Here you can indicate what the injection enrichment should be in percentages on top of the injection time, and therefore how many crankshaft revolutions this enrichment should be active. So in this mapping it is set, for example, that for a motor with a water temperature below 10 degrees, the first injection pulse of 25 milliseconds takes place. After that, for 100 crankshaft revolutions, 32% is enriched on top of the injection time. 
between 100 and 200 crankshaft revolutions for 14%, and so this is reduced to 4% until this condition ends. This menu is very important for the engine to start properly. You will have to spend some time on this to have this correctly set for each temperature, so that the engine will start in all conditions. Let's go to the next menu, the lambda control. In this menu you can set all functions related to the lambda control and in combination with a carrot Uego controller. This controller measures the exhaust cast mixture with a very high frequency and communicates this with ECU so that the injection time can be adjusted accordingly. This control works real time and the proposed corrections are also saved in a separate folder so that you can also adjust the injection map. Here you can select the controller type. At the moment only one type is possible. Below you can set the water temperature from which the control is switched on. The cabbage Uigo controller is able to regulate even when the engine is cold, so set at 10 degrees here. Delay from start to on is the delay time with which the ladder control must be switched on after the engine is started. A ladder probe needs a certain amount of time to warm up for a reliable measurement. In this case the delay is set to 5 seconds. In this box you can set the maximum range of the ladder control. Here what the maximum fuel increase correction may be and here the maximum fuel decrease correction. This limits the control and its functioning if something is wrong. If the injection mapping differs a lot from the desired values, you can choose to increase this range so that the ladder control has more possibilities to control the mixture. Here you can make settings regarding to the overrun where the ladder control must be temporarily switched off. Under a certain position of the throttle, combustion changes in such a way that there is a large amount of oxygen in the exhaust mixture. A lean mixture is then measured, while in reality this is not always the case. During these circumstances it is therefore desirable to turn off the lab control. When the position of the throttle valve falls below this position, the lab control is switched off. Below you can set at which engine speed the ladder control may be switched on again when it is an overrun. If the overrun is active, in this case when the throttle valve is below position 0.4, the ladder control is switched off. When the engine speed drops below 2800 rpm, the ladder control will become active again. You often set this rpm speed well above the idle rpm. When the engine recovers from the overrun situation, it is necessary to wait some time before switching on the lab control until the motor has stabilized. This delay in seconds can be entered here, in this case 0.8 seconds. In this box you can set to switch off the lab control when the throttle valve is opened or closed quickly. When rapid throttle changes occur, the lab measurement is not reliable and the control must be switched off. With this value, you can indicate what the throttle valve change in degrees may be, and this value with the throttle change in increase may be, valid for a time interval of 30 milliseconds. In this case, they are both set to 0.3, which means there should be no more than 0.3 change in throttle position in 30 milliseconds. You can see the throttle position value here in the dashboard. With these values, it can be indicated with which delay the lab control may be switched on again if the throttle change is again below 0.3 per 30 milliseconds. This time can again be set separately for a throttle position increase and decrease. Below you can make the settings for the maximum increase or decrease of the lab control between two samples. Depending on the set sample rate, you can determine at what speed the lab control can correct. For example, if the sample rate is set to 10 samples per second, then in this case the ladder control can correct a maximum of 10% per second. Here you can indicate under which throttle position this maximum correction between two samples is valid. It is recommended to set this value between 4 and 10 after the motor has been properly mapped. If the throttle position exceeds this value, there is no upper limit to the maximum correction between two samples. We have already talked about the sample rate and you can set it here under this button. Here you can set how many corrections the lambda control can perform per second. It is recommended to set this between 6 and 10. The correction amplifier can be used to set a gain for the correction. 
For a quick correction to a desired target value, the first step of the correction must be larger. It is recommended to set this to 1 or 2. By enabling advanced settings, you can set the sample rate of the lambda control to throttle position and engine speed. In theory, you can set the sample rate higher at higher engine speeds and throttle positions, because more combustions take place per second and there's a larger exhaust gas flow. If the sample rate is too low, the lambda control will not reach the desired target fast enough. If the sample rate is too high, the lambda control will become unstable. With the table warm-up lambda limits, you can set an upper limit to the lambda value at low engine temperatures. Limiting the lambda value at low engine temperature ensures that the engine continues to run better under these temperature conditions. It prevents the lambda control from not regulating to a higher target value that is set in the target map. Here you can enable the error detection of the lambda control and with this button the settings. With this first value, you can indicate what the maximum negative fuel correction may be in case the engine temperature exceeds the value here. So in this case, the lambda control may only correct 10% negative if the water temperature is above 119 degrees. This function can prevent a mapped overheating enrichment protection from being regulated back, and in this case, maintaining this protection. This value is used to check that the lambda sensor is correctly connected and functioning. The lambda signal must fluctuate with a set value during heating, in this case 0.02. This is a time that the lambda control may be on maximum fuel correction increase. If this time is exceeded, the lambda control switches itself off. The same applies to a fuel correction decrease. Finally, uh, you can set a compensation here, should the lambda control be switched off due to a detected error. This can be used as a protection against a lean mixture. It is recommended to enter a value between 0 and 10% here. If we go back to the previous menu, you can switch the lambda control on or off with this check mark. With this button, you can open the target mapping where the lambda control is running on. This map has the same layout as the injection or ignition fields, with the same functionalities. Here you can indicate the desired lambda mixture per throttle position and engine speed. The lambda control will try to regulate to this value. Below you can open the saved correction mapping. The lambda control corrects the injection times so that the values in the lambda target map are achieved. The percentages that the lambda control must correct in order to realize the values in the target map are stored in the correction map. The values stored in the correction map can be selected and sent as correction percentage to the injection map. With this, the injection curve can be adjusted so that the lab control ultimately has to correct less. After sending the correction percentages, the correction map can be reset. This is done by selecting this box here. Finally, within the lab control, we can set here what the allowed range of the lab control is to store values in the correction mapping. The correction percentages are only stored in the correction mapping if the lambda value is within a certain range of the desired value. There are two choices for the range. By choosing level 2, the correction value will be stored in the correction map when the lambda control comes within 0.2 of the desired target value. With level 1, this is 0.1. It is recommended to map the engine with level 2 first because this will fill in the correction map faster. In addition, we can set here what the deviation may be between the actual and nominal engine speed and throttle position, as a value in the map. Correction values are only stored in the correction map if the engine speed and TPS value are in the range of the nominal value. There are two choices for the range. By choosing level 2, the correction value will be stored in the correction map when the lambda control comes within 0.2 of the desired target value. With level 1, this is 0.1. With this, we have fully discussed the lambda control. As you can see, the settings of the lambda control are quite advanced, and if the parameters are set incorrectly, the control cannot function properly. The settings and example mappings form a good basis for the correct functioning of the lambda control. This brings us to the end of this video. 
In the next video, we will further discuss the other functions of the settings menu.